the XWRL is Nexi's answer to those adventure riders who probably spend a bit more time on the dirt than they do on the tarmac. I've been wearing this for the last few months and here is what I've discovered. Let's kick off with a look at some of the technical details. The shell has a full carbon construction, which means it's nice and light, weighing in at 1,250 grams in this size large. The sizing is also spread across three different shell sizes, which is good to see. One of the big selling features of this helmet is the amount of ventilation, with six vents at the front of the helmet and two at the rear. The big chin vent is actively open, but it also features a foam element behind there to stop grit and insects making their way through. There are two side vents on the top of the helmet, which are backed up by a much bigger, larger central one, as well as the brow vents on each side. All of the vents feature a two-stage opening, with the exception of the chin vent, obviously. For colder or wet conditions, there is a solid enclosed chin vent cover in the accessory pack. Also in the pack are some stickers, side panel covers if you're riding without the peak, and an action cam flat mount that sits on the top of the helmet. The side profile of the helmet has this little cutaway here, and that's to enable it to be worn comfortably with most neck braces. There's also a rigid click into place plastic goggle strap retainer on the back of the helmet. The lining is soft and plush and is laid out for maximum airflow. It's all removable and washable too. There are quick release cheek pads if the worst should happen and the emergency services need to remove the helmet safely. And if you use a water bladder, there are loops built into the underside of the side pads to enable you to route the drinking tube through. If you want to fit comms, there are cutouts in the EPS liner for earpieces. And to be honest, it doesn't look like it will be much trouble to fit most units. The double D ring fixing has a handy magnetic clasp on the end of the strap. So no fiddling to find a popper, just let it snap into place. Another great feature of the XWRL is that it ships with two visors as standard, clear and this fantastic looking iridium tinted version. There's also a pin lock in the box, but only one. There is also a transitions light sensitive visor available too, and it'd be interesting to see how that works on this helmet. I've been using one on my Shoei RYD for a number of years now, and it's been absolutely excellent. I love it. Now the helmet's got a pretty decent sized peak on it already, but this front section can extend and retract just by pulling it backwards and forwards. No tools necessary to do that. Now it says that this is for when you're transitioning between road and highway, but I'll be honest and say that in use, I've not really noticed too much difference whether it's in that position or that position, either on the road or on the dirt. Finally, there is no quick release mechanism for the visor. You do have to undo these three bolts to be able to take the peak off to get the visor off. Um, but they unscrew very easily. You can do those with a coin. You don't need any special tools. And once they're off, the visor will just pop off and pop on. So really easy to do. And the other good thing is these bolts are aluminium as opposed to plastic. So they should last well. And they seem to be in the use that I've had with it so far, pretty robust. Okay, so that's the tech stuff, but what is it like to ride in? Comfort wise, I found it excellent. I'm normally a large in most helmets and this is no exception. I would say this is an intermediate oval head shape and I found that it fitted me very well indeed. Because of the way the lining is constructed, it is very snug to start with, but I have to say that it did bed down within the first few rides and became very comfortable very quickly. The thing you really do notice is just how light it is. It hardly feels like you're wearing a helmet, which has been excellent for long all day rides, no fatigue or neck ache, and that element really impressed me. The peak is pretty good too, and there's very little in terms of wind grab or vibration. There is some, but it's no more marked than any other adventure helmet I've worn in the past. As I mentioned earlier, there is plenty of ventilation and it works really well both on and off road. The eye port is wide and will take pretty much any goggles. I tried it with some Oakley medium sized ones that I use with no problem, and even the big Ariette 8K goggles fit. 
These, by the way, are truly excellent goggles and I will do a standalone review of those at some point in the future. Incidentally, the goggles also work whether you've got the visor fitted or not. So if you want to ride with the visor lifted and the goggles in place, you've got no problems whatsoever. If you're wearing it with goggles or with sunglasses and all of the vents open, then the airflow in this helmet is amazing. It's definitely a great feature when working hard off-road or riding in very hot temperatures on the tarmac. Noise is a question that always comes up and of course I'll include my usual caveat. Noise is heavily affected by the fit and the type of bike that you're riding. This helmet fits me very well and the padding in the ear section is particularly effective so I found this helmet to be quiet. Not exceptionally but very good for this style of lid Carbon fibre helmets always tend to amplify wind noise a little bit more and that's just the trade-off you get against the weight saving. But I have worn this on all day rides with earplugs admittedly and I've had no problem with it whatsoever. So there's not much more I can really say to be honest. It's a well-built lightweight adventure style helmet that's equally at home on tarmac and dirt. If you're in need of a drop down sunshade this isn't the helmet for you. But with the aforementioned transitions visor in place, I think this will actually make for a very comfortable and very functional adventure touring helmet. Next helmets seem to be getting better and better every year. And I think this is certainly a premium looking and premium feeling lid. In plain white, the XWRL retails at $434.99 with the graphic options coming in at $479.99. I'll leave a link down below if you want to go and have a look at those. That is an affiliate link, so if you do buy anything through that, I do get a little kickback from the retailer. Uh, it doesn't make the item any more expensive for you, and it just helps to keep these review videos coming through. If you have any questions about the helmet, let me know in the comment section down below. And all that leaves me to say is, until next time, thanks for watching, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.